Okay, hi there and welcome to a new series of short videos looking at aspects of the economics of labour migration. This is undoubtedly one of the most topical important issues facing not just the UK but many countries across the world. And in this series of short videos we're going to be taking a look at uh, some of these issues. What are the main drivers of labour migration? What are the key trends in migration, especially for the UK economy? Then we'll think about the impact of labour migration on aggregate demand and aggregate supply. And then we'll do a special video thinking about the costs and benefits of migration, evaluating the overall macroeconomic impact, both in the short run and also, crucially, of course, the long-term performance of a country. So in this first video, we're going to take a look at some of the data looking at the key trends in migration for the UK. Well, as this chart shows, over the last uh, 40 years, there has been a significant rise in both emigration, that's the orange line, that's people leaving the UK, and also immigration, the blue line, people coming to the UK. A significant increase in both. What matters, of course, is net migration. And net migration is the difference between immigration and emigration. It's the number of people moving to live in a country, entering the UK, minus the number of people who would decide to move out of that country to live and work elsewhere. Now, if we put the, uh, the histogram in here, net migration is simply the balance between the blue line and the orange line. It's the balance between the two figures. And it reached a peak, actually, of over 340,000 in 2015, just a year before the EU Brexit referendum. Now, crucially, since then, net migration into the UK has declined, dropping to, I think, 225,000 in 2019, according to the most recent data. Now, there's a slightly different bit of data. The number of EU nationals working in the UK has increased over the last 20 years, no doubt particularly when the, the new EU countries joined, Poland, the Czech Republic, Hungary, the Baltic states, and so on. Uh, Bulgaria and Romania joined in 2007. But actually, the number of EU nationals working in the UK has actually been broadly flat. If you look at the blue line here, broadly speaking, flat for the last three to four years at just under two and a half million. Uh, there's been a, a, long, a fall in long-term immigration to the UK after the referendum, particularly amongst EU citizens and people without a definite job lined up. The number of non-EU nationals working in the UK from outside the UK has, has been rising. Uh, that's the orange line. One way of looking at migration is to say, well, what percentage of the population of working age are in work? And what's interesting is the, here's the figures for the EU nationals again and non-EU nationals. You know, people coming from countries such as India and Pakistan, the United States and so on. But actually, if you put in the blue line for UK nationals, what comes out in this data uh, is that the since the mid-2000s, the, uh, the employment rate, the percentage of the population working age in work has actually been higher for EU nationals in the UK than for UK nationals as a whole. Uh, the significant, you know, the vast majority of EU nationals who are living in the UK have a job and they're working in the UK. So there we go, there are some of the key trends in migration for the UK economy. 